Due to the September 11, 2001 attack on America, all public tours of the Hanford site have been canceled until further notice. In its top secret wartime effort, the federal government chose a site along the Columbia River to produce plutonium for nuclear weapons. This site, known as Hanford, is now the greatest storehouse of toxic waste in the Western Hemisphere. Months prior to the events of September 11th, a physician-sponsored public tour explored the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Members of the public, including an artist and two doctors, toured the facility by land. Others, including a grandmother, opted to take the tour by river. I know nothing about Hanford. The reason why I want to go to Hanford is to become more aware of, of what it looks like. I've never been to Hanford uh, before, um, so I'm not sure exactly what's there or, or what to expect. As uh, medical professionals, we take a scientific viewpoint of things, and there's two sides to any story. And by going to Hanford, uh, we may get a little bit more of the other side. I go to Hanford with some degree of prejudice uh, because I feel like I have uh, studied enough about it to have some strong feelings. But I hope to have a fair and open view of what is actually there. I'm 78 years old, and more than 50 of those years have been spent in the shadow of the atomic age. I was originally a kind of a tag along on the boat trip because I really wanted to see what a major nuclear facility looked like. The federal government chose 560 square miles in southeastern Washington state on which to build nuclear weapons in the 1940s. This area, known as the Hanford Nuclear Reservation, produced plutonium for the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki. to bomb Nagasaki during the Second World War and nuclear weapon production in general remain controversial issues. The desire to clean up this ecological nightmare, however, remains common ground. The site rests along the Columbia River, which is the lifeblood of the Northwest. Citizens' tax dollars continue to pile up to the tune of over $3 million a day, 365 days a year. Now, the major mission at Hanford is cleanup. Radioactive waste is stored in unlined soil trenches. Chemical and radioactive storage tanks and basins are leaking. We drifted along the Columbia River that bitterly cold day and I remember seeing the cranes on one side of the river. Very elegant and lovely. But on the other side was Hanford. We stopped at N Reactor, the last of the U.S. plutonium production reactors. It seems the Department of Energy could gain public acceptance by giving cheap electricity that partly comes from the production of nuclear weapons. N Reactor was closed in 1986. The problem was that N Reactor was the prototype that they built Chernobyl from. The main emotional impact of seeing Hanford was its huge size. The distances between the plants, the fact that those areas were all contaminated, the closeness of it all to the Columbia River. We did have some leaking tanks out at Hanford. Uh, after about 10 years, some of the wells and some of the tanks would fail, and, and high-level contamination has leaked into the ground at some of these locations. And they've transferred the, the leaking tanks, high-level waste from, from there, over to double wall tanks. Now, there's always a possibility of an accident uh, happening. A tank blew up, and, and a hole occurred in the building out on the Hanford project. But in the meantime, some of that contamination did get into the underground water table, and the underground water table goes to the Columbia River. And we do have some tritium in the river out there now. It's a little upsetting to, to know how slow things are moving in terms of uh, cleaning things up there. Um, we, we know that there's uh, various places where nuclear materials are being 
uh, stored, um, all on an interim basis, waiting until we can find some place to put them permanently, because we're talking about things that are going to be highly radioactive and highly dangerous for thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years. The thing that impacted me the most about the whole experience was that they knew they had to clean up by, you know, 2018, but we don't know how we're going to do it yet. It really dawned on me that it was going to be a never-ending problem, you know, and I mean, it's probably one thing after another, and there's probably more problems that they don't even know about yet that are going to happen. So then, and that's when I felt helpless. We cannot allow ourselves to be overcome by the size of this problem. It is too much in the interest of the public health, and it is an absolute moral necessity that we continue to... You, you do feel sometimes helpless about big issues like this by joining a group of, of other individuals who are equally as concerned uh, about the issue that working together we can have a, a larger impact than any one of us can have uh, individually. In the 2004 general election in Washington state, citizens passed an initiative which forces the Department of Energy to clean up the existing waste before bringing any more in. The Department of Energy continues to fight this initiative. We're worried about searching all over the world because terrorists might find radioactive material, steal it, sneak it into the country and build a dirty bomb. The Department of Energy is putting that stuff on the highway. Hanford, as the ancestral wintering ground of the Yakima, is an area of great cultural significance and a place abundant in natural resources. Damage to this land from nuclear operations has happened in the most fleeting amount of time, sometimes by ignorance, often by willful neglect. It is still worth asking today what has been done to this land. And after eight years and many billions of dollars spent, what has been done to restore this land? Leaving toxic waste in place sounds more like no cleanup, but it is part of a national strategy. The main component of all is passing the responsibility for these hazards onto future generations.